I had tried to quit drinking once, and I had a seizure. This was about six months prior to the hospital. Um, just my, because you stopped, because... This, this was the first time I actually just decided to... I woke up and I said, I'm not going to drink today. And drying out caused you to have a seizure? That's how, that's how physically addicted you were to it? I was about 18 hours without a drink. That was it. I was about 18 hours without a drink. It was a car ride to Iowa. We got to Iowa. We went down to the lake, and that's when it happened. Yeah, I mean, I honestly, before that, I hadn't gone a day without drinking in maybe four or five years. Like, drinking big. Big, yeah. I, did, I never drank one drink, ever. That, there was never a beer. It was never go out with friends and have a beer and then go home. I was drunk when I got to the bar. I was drunk. I was always drunk. I drank it's like a prescription. Every few hours, I would have another glass. And I didn't take shots. I drank glasses of vodka. I got to the point where I stopped, had a seizure, and I was like, well, fuck that. I'm not doing that ever again. I'm not going <laughs> to stop if that's what I get for stopping. You know, That's ridiculous. The day I got out of the hospital in Iowa, I was drinking again. I went out, got a beer, got a a 40 ounce beer and to calm and, yourself and feel better right right oh well, yeah and to avoid another seizure you know i don't know at that point i'm shaky and i'm like i'm not going to the hospital again and if i'm drunk then i won't have a seizure and it's better to be drunk than having a seizure even as a recovering alcoholic i'd still say it's better to go get drunk than have a seizure after after the seizure that's when i started drinking again and then that's when i was told I couldn't stay at home anymore, moved into a place by myself, didn't have a job, had enough money to make this place work for a few months, and I quit. I didn't do anything but drink. At that point, for that last six months, it was a handle of vodka every 24 hours for me. That's a handle. That's what my, that's what my life gave What's me. a handle? A 175, 1.75. Really? Yeah. A day. Every 24 hours, yeah. I would never run out. I would always, I would always get to the liquor store when you have a quarter of a bottle left because, you know, what if you get in there and they say you're too drunk, I can't, I can't sell you something, you know? And I would go in there just flat wasted, just wasted and just buy my alcohol. And, and I mean, that's, that's what it was. You just didn't run out. At that point in my life, it felt like that was what was keeping me alive. If, if I stopped, I'm going to end up in the hospital. I'm probably going to die. And that was the truth. I mean, I did. I ended up stopping, not because I wanted to, but because I couldn't keep it down. And then I remember having seizures alone in that apartment. I remember having hallucinations. I remember sensations of things crawling on me, just like the most horrific. Nobody talks about withdrawals when you talk about addiction. And for me, that's what it was. I would do anything to avoid withdrawals just because it was, it was the worst. And with alcohol, you don't even hear about that, you know? You hear about a hangover. And if that's what I was dealing with, I'd have had no problem. And you're going through withdrawals because you're trying to stop drinking? No, I'm not trying to stop drinking. At that point, I had developed pancreatitis. And so basically it was like, I didn't know I had it at the time. I thought I just had like a stomach flu. Anything I ate, I threw up. I'd have a drink, like literally a drink of water, and I would just throw it up like five minutes later. My stomach couldn't keep anything in, in it. So, so that's how I stopped drinking. And I remember going through you these... Mean you mean you, went you were at the hospital, you find... No. I was at the apartment alone. How'd you find out you had pancreatitis? At the hospital. That, okay. was, like, that was like... So they told you that... That, was, that was after I woke up in the hospital. I woke up after my third day in ICU, and, um, and then I was told I had pancreatitis. They showed me all kinds of due charts. Due to drinking? Yes, all of it was due to drinking. They showed me charts of all my organs and how my, my liver, and there was like a graph chart, that, and there was like no graph on it. it they tried like, to scare you straight. Yeah, exactly. Right? And, and honestly, they did. They really did. One of the doctors said, listen, I've seen this kind of stuff before in 50-year-olds, in people that have been drinking for, you know, 30, 40 years. I don't know how you got to this point so quickly. You know, they would tell me stuff like that. And it was like, 
you know, it scares you. I'm good at everything I do. <laughs> well, and that's the other thing. Like when I look at my addiction and when I look at a lot of people in recovery that I've met, the, the biggest thing that I see in all of us is that we don't do anything a little bit. There's nothing, there, there really is, there's nothing that I could say like, oh, I just, I do that sometimes. It's either I do it and I make it my life, just like school. Now that I'm, you know, I'm doing better, but school is something that I do all the time. I go to school, I go home, I do homework, I go to work, I go to school, I go home, and, and I, I just put my whole self into it. You, that's a better choice of something to put your, Absolutely. your whole life in. But you are talking about you lose balance. All, you, the idea of balance, you've it, never known balance. Even, yeah, even with good things. Right. I mean, it can be a bad thing, you know? It's getting better. The more you think about it, I mean, you can learn anything. That's the beauty of being a human. You can, you can learn balance. It's hard, but I mean. How, how, do, how, are you, how do you learn balance? I agree, by the way, we can learn anything. I, I look at it like this. I learned to drink like that. I knew that I shouldn't. I drank a long time knowing that what I was doing was wrong, but I learned how to do it and how to function, how to hold a job, how to, you know, how to make sure people could still deal with me. And that really, like, that became part of my life. It was like, how can I be drunk all the time? And, Managing your addiction. And make sure that people yeah. will still be able to deal with me. There's a concept, managing your addiction. Yeah. And, and you a, learn how to do, like, yeah. these crazy things like that. So, I mean, maybe it, it's hard. No doubt it's hard. And it wasn't, like, a quick thing. But it's the same thing with balance, with I'll, I'll go to school and... and you know, I'll get all my stuff done and then I'll still want to do school because there's always something else I could do. But I'm getting to the point where I can stop myself and I can say, listen, I have to go do something else. I can't, I can't start the next subject. I have to go hang out with a friend, you know. I have to go do something else, even if I don't want to. And that's, honestly, that's been a lot of recovery for me. I, I have to understand that most of the things that I want to do are destructive to myself. They really are. Like, like I've, I've been without a drink for two years, and last week, it was ridiculous. I got a B on a test, and that like never happens to me. And since I've been back to school, since drinking, that's never happened to me. And I got this B on this test, and it's not a bad grade, you know? I wasn't like devastated, but I seriously, when I saw that, I was like, shit, man. Like, why did this happen? And the first thing that popped in my head, I was like, I, would, I just want to go get drunk. <laughs> I just want to go get drunk. Wow. After two That's years. Intense. That explains a lot, though. That thing, that trigger in you, that something can make you so mad, so pissed off. Yeah, and it doesn't even have to be anything, you know, big. It's just... No, that's not big. Take it from the rest of us. That's <laughs> not big. Right, right. That's, but that's what I mean. It's... Now, you ended up... Uh, Having a great vacation up at a farm for 13 months, right? It's quite the vacation, yeah. So talk to me about your vacation. And how'd you get up there? I learned from a social worker. I remember sitting in the hospital, talking to my mom. She's, a, I'm laying there pretty much useless. I can't walk, I can't, can't think, can't concentrate on anything for more than 10 minutes. And I remember talking to my mom about what was going to happen after I got out of the hospital and how I, I wanted to go home. I just, I was like, I want to go home. We'll try to make this better. Mom said, you can't go home. You got to get help somewhere. I mean, you can go to your dad's or something like that. And I just, that was a point where I felt like I didn't have anything left. And she's telling me that I have to go get help, that I have to go to rehab. And I'm, I've, I'm sitting there like, like, I don't want to do anymore. I've done enough. I'm, I don't feel like I'm going to stop drinking. Even sitting in the hospital, I'm, I'm just wanting to get out and just go drink. I remember I had a bottle of vodka in my backpack that I had packed. I planned to drink vodka after I got out of the hospital because Gary came to pick me up and I put a bottle of vodka in my backpack. Planning your, your next drunk all the time, yeah. probably. Yeah. And, and so mom tells me that um, rehab's the way I gotta go. I'm devastated. I mean, I, I don't, I don't wanna do it. 
And, I, and I'm like, well, I can fake it too, you know? It, that, and that comes into the, the addict's mind. I mean, I'm like, I can go to rehab. I can pretend that I'm going to get better for a few months. And a social worker comes in and just starts listing off rehabs. And she's listing off like Harmony House, just your normal rehabs that are 30 days and $15,000. And I'm, I have nothing at this point. I'm in a hospital. I have no money. I, have, I don't even really have a place to live. And she said Harvest Farm. And she said it was free. And she said it was in Wellington, which is right by, which is right outside of Fort Collins, where I have a lot of family. And I was like, all right, if it's free, I can go there. I can pretend like I'm going to do some rehab there. I became a person that you shouldn't be around. If I met who I was three years ago, I wouldn't talk to him.